Hey folks, your OS Reviews, you're watching our video comparison between the Domino DM368 and the DM98. Both of these are Android smartwatches that runs on a full version of Android, not Android Wear, and that means you can download and run virtually any program from the Play Store, from games to other productivity features. And so they're very advanced and fully packed, and both of them retail for under uh, 90 bucks, which is also quite inexpensive. In this video, we'll be kind of discussing the similarities, differences, and which one I think has a slight edge to the average consumer. So let's start with a bit of a refresher and go over the design of both of these smartwatches. Starting with the Domino version, you can see this is a true round display that measures 1.4 inches diagonally. It's a 400 by 400 resolution panel, which is sharp enough for a, such a small size. And it's also an AMOLED screen that offers deep contrast and pretty vibrant colors in general, protected by a layer of Corning's Gorilla Glass. Um, this is contrasted with the DM98 that has a 2.2 inch display that's a TFT LCD panel and not AMOLED but also is capacitive, very similar resolution and also protected by Gorilla Glass. So overall this one does have obviously a slightly larger footprint and screen size but this shares a more similar uh, form factor to a traditional watch. Otherwise, we have aluminum and aluminum and rubber accents in the construction of both of these watches. And what's interesting about the 368 is it also features a heart rate sensor, which means that you can use it to measure your heartbeats and as a fitness tracking tool. They both use the same charging cable or proprietary port, and both can take a nano SIM card to be used as traditional cell phones or smartphones, which is actually pretty cool. As far as the overall design and comfort, I have to say that there is an edge to the 368 8 just because I feel like it's smaller, it does feel more comfortable in the day-to-day, -day. it's less bulky and less obtrusive. Whereas with this, it's definitely chunky and though it, although it's small by smartphone standards, um, it does become a little obtrusive if you're consistently typing the strap and the edges does tend to get in the way of the keyboard uh, and movements in general are just a bit more clumsy. So I think in terms of looks, I would definitely prefer the Domino. In terms of the user interface and the hardware specifications, both of these smartwatches are also quite similar. They both run on a heavily skinned version of Android, but with the Domino, it's the more recent Android version 5.1, whereas the 98 runs on a slightly older Android version 4.4 on top of Fun OS, that's the name of the skin. They're both coupled with 512 megabytes of RAM, which is sufficient for the tasks that you'll be performing on these watches. And the processor, in addition to other storage elements, are exactly the same. So they both are pretty similar in terms of other hardware uh, attributes. The only difference that I found was that the 98 does have a front-facing camera that could be useful, uh, arguably, if you are doing video conferencing or chats using WeChat or Skype. Uh, this allows you just to point your wrist, uh, you know, upwards at your face and then you can communicate with your friends and family that way, which is actually a pretty cool feature, but it does result in a larger bezel around the device. Uh, this watch, on the other hand, does not come with an integrated camera. So let's jump into the software side of things, starting with the 98. You can see that we have this watch face. Tapping and holding on the main screen allows me to customize the watch face and I can also download more as they become readily available. Finally, swiping down here gives me access to uh, kind of a recent panel of uh, information for my battery, as well as my cell phone status, airplane mode, date, as well as a Wi-Fi status, things like that that can be quickly accessed. Dragging upwards gives you the weather, and finally, to the left here gives me my notification shade. I can also swipe to the right to access a list view of all the applications stored on this watch. It's very intuitive, it's very easy to use, the touchscreen is sensitive, and overall I'm a fan of the gesture-based interface. It's a very similar affair on the 98, although there are a few small differences. First of all, when you power it on, there's a slide to unlock function just to prevent it from accidentally getting triggered, uh, maybe if it turns on by itself, using the gesture or flick to turn on mode. However, I think it's a little redundant in my day-to-day -day testing, so I do prefer the 98's kind of uh, layout where you just tap on this to have access to everything at once. I can swipe here on the right to have access to a quick pedometer app, which is pretty useful. There's also a quick dialer pad and weather information. Finally, I can swipe over to have my notification shade, just like on the Domino version. I can swipe downwards to have access to time and date uh, airplane information, and I can swipe upwards to have brightness controls for the screen. So very similar as far as settings and profiles being located at the top and bottom, notification shade located at the edge, and some more advanced things located on the side. 
However, to access a full list of applications on this watch, I need to tap on the main screen once. And that brings up a more traditional list-like view of everything on here, uh, very similar to an actual Android smartphone. Uh, and it works for the most part, but you can see it's a bit more clustered looking, although it does work a little better since this is a square design, so the icons being square themselves fits in better than something like this, which has a round shape to it. To change watch faces, I also double hold on the main screen for a few seconds, and that brings up some customization options, as well as future settings, uh, future watch faces that can be downloaded from the internet. So no complaints there. When it comes to connectivity, both of these watches are very similar. They have Wi-Fi, they have GPS, they have Bluetooth, and they both support 3G bands here in the United States with T-Mobile and AT&T. So very similar there. When it comes to battery life and performance, the Domino has a slight edge. This could last me for about a day, maybe a day and a half, if I used it very occasionally before it needs to be recharged. Whereas the DM98 absolutely needed to be recharged at the end of each day. That's probably attributed to the slightly larger display uh, so you know this does drain battery a little faster despite the fact that it doesn't have the optical heart rate sensor that's something to quickly point out otherwise charging rates are also quite similar both of them will be fully charged in under three hours so it's acceptable for a wearable product uh, if we take a look at some of the bundled apps on both of these watches again i swipe over and i tap once on the main screen here, you can see that the contacts list, phone messaging features, browser, as well as clock, gallery, music, stuff like that are all very typical and stock on the Domino. On the DM98, they also are fairly traditional. However, there's been a heavier layer of customization as far as how the icons look and feel. You can see some of the weather apps and the utility tools have definitely been customized. Uh, and overall, the aesthetic doesn't remain quite as clean, and be that's because you can see some of the words are cut off since they're so long and they have to scroll through to display everything and that doesn't look quite as aesthetically pleasing as what you have on the Domino uh, watch here. Regardless, everything does still function, and admittedly, there are a few more preloaded apps on the DM98, including WeChat and WhatsApp, as well as Facebook preloaded, whereas on this, you do have to install those apps yourself from the Play Store, and both of them do come with the Play Store. One area where the DM98 shines, though, is in browsing the web, watching videos, and typing, because you do have a slightly larger and more traditional keyboard. Granted, it's still a fraction of the size of what you get on a smartphone, but uh, in general, typing is a little bit faster and easier than on this very cramped rounded display and also the same thing goes with watching videos since the videos themselves are still square having a square in the middle of a circle is a small cutout compared to an actual full-size square of the video that you're watching if you're interacting with YouTube for instance the DM 98 also has multi-touch enabled by default so you can pinch and zoom out of maps and web browsers however this one has the pinch to zoom disabled just as a utility uh, feature so you can't actually pinch in and out of maps and the web, so that's something to quickly point out. But at the end of the day, I would say that the Domino DM368 is the slightly better smartwatch for the general consumer. And that's just because battery life is slightly longer, the heart rate sensor offers one more additional function, and I think that the overall form is just more elegant and makes more sense, uh, in addition to having a better display in terms of contrast and viewing angles, uh, and basically the same processing package, even though it's running on a newer version of Android, which is always nice to see. Um, even though it doesn't make for quite as easy of an experience for watching movies or videos or typing, again, those aren't things you'll be doing regularly on a smartwatch anyways. They're more of a proof of concept. And again, for telling time as well as handing the essentials, I do think that 368's ever so slightly slicker interface and just the ease of use in the day-to-day -day slightly edges out the DM98, which is just a bit more chunky and unrefined. So unless you are a true maybe let's say geek at heart and you don't mind you know having a bulkier device and you just want a larger screen on your wrist then of course the D98 makes a bit more sense it also has that built-in camera but everything else about it including an older software version and the fact that the screen isn't quite as high res or uh, high in contrast just makes the 368 a better product in my opinion especially since they come at basically the same price tag online so anyways guys that was our comparison between between two fairly popular kind of generic Android smart watches that again runs on a full version of Android and not some proprietary OS or a watered down version that makes them very capable 
and it comes close to uh, that long-awaited comic book dream of having the power of a computer in our pockets, or in this case, on our wrists. So thanks for watching this video here at OS Reviews. This was a closer comparison between the D368 and the D98.